Welcome to the Ascension Academy podcast. I am your host, Tumai, and we also have Audrey. Oh. <laughs> Audrey here. And we're so happy to be with you today. I'm your in house aromatherapist and essential oil coach. This is episode number one of season number one. And during this season, we are focusing on essential oils and exploring all things health and wellness when using mother nature's scents and smells a little bit about me um, i'm your dedicated breath facilitator and coach helping you raise awareness within your body and within your breathing mechanics and a bit about me other than being the aromatherapist and sensual coach i'm here to help you gain insight into the incredible potential and often untapped potential of what Mother Nature has to offer in her toolbox. So we're going live right now. We're also recording it. This particular episode will be on Spotify, Apple, and we thought to keep it in a conversational style. Uh, for those of you that are inside of our Facebook membership group, uh, if you're a part of the family, you get first dibs. You are able to see this live and ask questions. I'll be checking the the live section um, as we go through this conversation, this podcast, which is episode number one. And today I sat down and thought, uh, what what would be ideal to cover? What's kind of the first conversations when speaking about essential oils and aromatherapy and its applications when it comes to other therapists that we work with on a day-to-day -day basis, all the way through to the client or the coach or the business owner that just needs a bit of a pick-me-up, whether that's in the office or in the gym. So yeah. today, in terms of the layout, we're going to be covering, number one, the basics and the fundamentals of applied aromatherapy. That's section number one. We have your in-house aromatherapist, Audrey. Uh, section number two, I thought it would be ideal to go over the core principles and the history of essential oils. And then we'll cover number three, understanding the quality and vibrational components of essential oils. Quick little plug-in. We cover this in more depth in our uh, free webinar that's coming up in about two weeks or so. I think it's on the 11th of November. We're going over the three key secrets of essential oils. Uh, I thought to go over section number four, uh, the difference between adulterated essential oil, oils or synthetics, perhaps we could call it, uh, through to authentic essential oils, understanding the, the differences. I know when I started my own journey, um, I really didn't know or understand how one lavender essential oil was different to the other. Um, and maybe uh, let's get curious about the distillation process. So we're going to talk about section number five, the distillation process. I'll have a few questions there. One of the topics um, that I thought to put down here in the contents was a, a topic that I'm somewhat curious and passionate about at the same time. Um, it always piqued my interest when learning a little bit about Gary Young and his story um, was understanding the husbandry of the land and the relationship between mankind and nature and how we've always been sort of interrelated. So 
I'd like to dive into those topics today. Audrey, what That's are your thoughts? lots to cover and so lots of juicy nuggets that we have to share with you that we've collected over the years. Yeah, great. So we're live at the moment. You'll see snippets of this inside of Audrey's story. If you want to follow along, we have an Instagram account, The Ascension Academy, a TikTok account, The Ascension Academy Australia or something along these lines. You could also go ahead and register for our upcoming webinar or masterclass on our website, which is ascensionacademy.au. Nice and simple. Mm -hmm. So we haven't really prepared any questions. So I'm going to start off with maybe the first kind of curious question um, and I'll come up with it right now. Um, keeping it light and easy, conversational style. Um, I think, Audrey... We're in a time where a lot of people rely, and I just got off, off the phone, funnily enough, with a really good friend of mine. We're in a time where a lot of people rely on um, other authorities to dictate their health and wellness journey. Yeah. Um, and we're also in a time where the level of awareness is somewhat missing, where we're only told by our, by our body that something is, has been missed health-wise when we're feverish or when we've got an issue in the bathroom toilet or perhaps we need to go in and get a scan and then shockingly enough um, uh, there's a problem that's brought into our awareness. So starting yeah. off with the basics and the fundamentals of aromatherapy and essential oils, um, why do you think essential oils are important to use day to day? And how do you think this could support people lifestyle wise ongoing and long term um, how does that all work when it comes to using mother nature and essential oils let's mm -hmm. start there well i think it's um we have to go back to what we were doing drawing knowledge and wisdom from the ages what were we doing before we even had modern medicine or um such intervention or such um i would say very what's the word not pervasive but very um it, it's just aggressive the the treatment and invasive, invasive is yep. the word uh what were we doing before all of this happened right before the onset of what we know as medicine today and it comes back down to balance like our bodies were born pure and clean and balanced and harmonious with Mother Nature, with the frequency of the planet, even if I dare say that, if you guys know anything about frequency of the planet. Uh, and in modern day living now, a lot of that has been taken away because we're so, we lack the connection with nature. Uh, there's a lot of very... I would say frequencies and devices and and man-made man-made stuff that's really interfered with our natural our body's natural state and natural um, balance or frequency. And I think with anything, it's like when you go back to how it used to be done, the doctors, and now they're coming back to that, the doctors will say, well, just go out and walk in the forest <laughs> and you'll feel better. And that's not an old wives' tale. You actually do feel better when you are one and connected with uh, nature or with universe. So what was the question? <laughs> yeah, how, how does this support and perhaps what I'm looking for is how do essential oils or Mother Nature's um, – signatures her mm. fingerprint how does that delay yeah or the even support the onset of any kind of the, yeah support health yes, and balance he yes yeah um well it comes back down to just i believe god created this planet with everything that we need the toolbox that we need to maintain and sustain a healthy life uh yeah and even if you look back to history um lifespan a uh, lifespan although it has increased with the onset of you know modern medicine and information there's a lot of also onset of disease and and um health problems um but i do believe you know even with medicine today it comes from somewhere that information that knowledge comes from somewhere and they created the first medicines with information they gathered from nature from plants and when you come back down to the fundamentals 
everything in nature is so complex. Mother Nature does not make simple compounds and simple molecules. It's highly complex. And interestingly enough, I read that a lot of the uh, enzymes that our body even has uh, are there because of our interaction, our relationship with Mother Nature thousands of years ago. So it's really interesting they can see that. And they've also found that so many compounds and molecules in Mother Nature are identical to the com- compounds found in our body. So that says a lot to you know to what we don't know, but it's there. It's evident that there's this long history, long-standing history and relationship that we have with Mother Nature long before modern medicine and uh, man interfering with how things should be. I truly believe that. What I found over sort of my years of uh, raising my awareness with my body and its relationship with nature and what sort of won me over is that um, the realisation that most of the things that I had that was a quick fix typically band-aided the problem and it came back with more of a vicious um, cycle. And so paying attention to this, and like you know that I I, I pay attention to often patterns, routines and cycles, both within my body and also in relationships, but I found that the minute I started to use natural processes, it kind of just supported the natural process of releasing or detoxing, for example. And so um, my shift into trusting Mother Nature had happened like instantly. There wasn't any one big health issue that I was dealing with. In fact, um, it was probably more to do with my my mom when I needed to help her. So the processes or protocols that I'm talking about, me being in breath work, there was breath work, there was meditation, there was yoga, Mm -hmm. there was a lot of uh, teas, fasting and fruits, smoothies and juices, um, uh, air, sunshine, movement, drinking the right water and getting the right oxygen. Mm -hmm. All of these components sort of supported my health journey and trusting um, the process. And then... I've noticed that I haven't gone to the doctors in years. I haven't had any issues in years. Um, I haven't had any fevers. I've been quite vital in my own energy. I've been happy. And that's been a fascinating reflection for me. Um, Getting more into the specifics, though, to ask you the basics of fundamentals and applied aromatherapy or using essential oils, how how does that work? Because Mm. obviously for me, you know, I use literally I sun, water, the right amount of air. But if we go to essential oils, where does that all fit? It's very similar. Like you you talked about vital energy and what are the things that we can introduce into our life that supports vital energy, which is electricity in our body, energy, right? It's what Eastern methodology used for thousands of years. Uh, Herbal remedies, tonics, tinctures, that's what I grew up with. And with modern science, we're able to really – distill pure plant essence, which is tens if not hundreds of times more potent than its herbal form that we know is helpful in supporting our health in our vital energy because it's been done for thousands of years. So thankfully with um, the science that we have today and the technology and the information, we're able to really preserve the integrity of plant essence, plant molecules in the form of essential oils. All right. So that contains vital energy. That contains frequency and energy and vibration of the plant. So that's why it's what we're going to talk about later is the integrity of the plant and the essential oil is really important. Mm. Uh, But using that in conjunction with your body uh, really is, is the basic principle. It's about receiving those chemical constituents, the chemistry that's found in the plant, and also receiving the vibrational frequency of the plant, right? Okay. Yeah, because everything is vibration, everything's energy. So I've got to do the the tricky job of pulling out the information from (laughs) Audrey and asking her the right question. She's taking some time to arrive at the the main points here. 
So again, I'm going to ask you if you could tightly answer tightly. the basics and fundamentals. You yes. were mentioning them in yep. long form. Yep. So go through the, yeah, the it's, absolute it's fundamentals. absolute fundamentals is receiving the compounds through your sense of smell, really triggering that limbic brain, supporting your emotions. The limbic brain is also, you know, supporting hormone balance, uh, and. Yeah, just coming back to basics, just resetting the body, harmonizing the body. Right. But why? Why is that important? Give, why give is, me more. Yeah. Yep. So why is it important? It's because we're bombarded with so much other crap and toxic stuff in our life. So being able to use these tools of Mother Nature to really detox, whether it be emotional, whether it be toxins in your body it actually helps to detox that your body from the things that interfere with you functioning at full capacity um, it's to be able to release your emotions release any stuck that you have in your body on many many levels um, yeah does that answer <laughs> it's great so some parts here that have been missed and we're about to transition over to the history if you really think about the sense of smell and um, it's tricky because Audrey has been taught to think in terms of textbook. Yeah, and technicality. she's been taught in a very specific way. But you've got to kind of step out of the body of study of aromatherapy and really understand... You have to unlearn it all. ...the, the history and step into the mystery, but also realise that, you know, older ancient cultures were already using the sense of smell at such a mm -hmm. high level. They didn't call it aromatherapy at that time, but they just knew that their smell was important to them. Their yeah. nose could pick up a whole um, range of information. And uh, it, in that context, think about the importance of plants and of mm -hmm. senses and smell and how some smells would portray wealth, status, hierarchy, Royalty, other smells would portray sickness, disease, um, uh, perhaps poverty, and there's a whole range in between. And so, I mean, if I was going out and I would was fasting or I, there would be a famine, my nose would be the first sensory that would pick up that someone's having a feast. And it's in this town and I need to figure out where that feast is and I'm going so to survival. follow my nose. Survival. Yeah. yeah, so absolute fundamentals. The nose at nose. that time is very important. So now if we isolate that and we, we upgrade at a level and we, we, we bring it into health, you can see how the stimulation of smell, herbal teas and plants could portray a whole mm. range of information to the brain because that sensory itself has led us to food. It's kept us healthy. It's uh, helped us to survive. It's dictated what hierarchy we are, whether the person or that particular female that's wearing a smell of rose, oh, she, she's, she's something beautiful there. I've got to follow that trail. There's someone there that I've got to follow and go meet. There's a level of attraction there perhaps. Alluring, yeah. So the basics and the fundamentals of um, essential oils is super important and it is your guidance system uh, that is going to allow you to understand essential oils and smell at a whole other level. Mm. Not just at the, the, the level of, of books or text, but if you can trust your nose to tell you what smell your body needs, what aroma it's looking for, then you've got a whole level of wisdom that you've unlocked that some people barely find all their lifetime. So we're talking about lifestyle. We're talking talking about things that can reduce your visits in at the doctor. We're talking about the body and its wisdom and how powerful the nose is that's pre-installed, by the way. Yeah, a lot of us have forgotten about it and that's where a lot of, um, you know, our nose can also deceive us though. So it's about really using pure untainted oils to clear your senses again, to open up your senses and, and reset it to what it was originally so that you can then be more discerning about what is safe, what is not safe when it comes to essential oils. Mm. Yeah. An important point here is, is I know that for me, when I was starting out my health journey is that I was I would get a lot of um, I would have focus issues and I would get headaches every now and then um, 
And my first relationship or smell with frankincense, it actually put me off. So my nose kicked up and I, I said that I, oh, man, that's too strong for me. I that wasn't quite my scent. I enjoyed lavender actually because I was raised on lavender and we can get into a story about that in another time. But frankincense in particular was one that I was working with. Now the nose both tells you something that is off-putting or that it's not used to, that's too overpowering. Mm. Um, and that's typically a really good sign that um, actually the body needs a little more of that inside of inside of it to support you. Now, now interestingly enough, if you look up some of the medical signs or perhaps the signatures of frankincense, you'll see the direct correlation of my symptoms and what was happening with me and what frankincense support or what possible solution it provided. And you could really tell, and it's just so point blank as to why I need to work a little more with frankincense. So that's my own personal story. Yep. Um, but to the question for you, Audrey, given that you're the aromatherapist, and if you're watching, by the way, inside of the members group, Feel free to drop any questions below inside of the comments. Um, if you're listening on Spotify or on Apple, uh, feel free to send us an email. Um, we're going to continue to go live inside of our live Facebook group and also make this for episode number one, season one, Central Oils as the focus. So, Audrey, talk to me about some of the history that you've come across um, studying and some things if you could step out and just notice what you've um, what you've paid attention to when looking at other cultures and talk to us about some of the core principles that you can take away from that um, to enable us to understand essential oils at that level. Go for it. Well, I guess thousands of years ago, um, people, different civilizations and cultures have already been accustomed to using something like essential oils, they did find really old uh, equipment in Egyptian uh, cultures that somehow distracted uh, plant essences. It's not like the essential oil we know today, but it's very close. And uh, you have just um, different ways that they they extracted it with maybe alcohols and tinctures and all that. Uh, and it was used just just carried on down through the through the thousands of years in their pharmacopoeia, which is really old medical journals that they kept uh, intact. So that's been really fascinating. And to, to, to today, many doctors around the world actually refer to those old texts, pharmacopoeia, um, because it's been carried for, you know, carried down through generations and uh, tried and true and tested, right? And so they've been used in different civilizations, like I mentioned, whether it be the Greeks or the Chinese, or the Egyptians, or the um, Romans, so many ancient uh, Indian cultures as well, Ayurvedic cultures, um, practices. And I think it's really interesting that all of them were using them to help, and, and usually it's for the privilege too, for a long time, it was considered only the wealthy could have them. Uh, but it's interesting that none of these cultures actually communicated with one another, but they all had somehow acquired the same knowledge through ex trial, and tri trial and tribulation, I want to say, or experimentation and uh, documentation of their, their uh, experiences. So it, I think it's been essential oils or extracts or uh, essences uh, being used with humans, being used with people. You could say it's the longest human trial ever. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's been tried and tested. And so it's it's – Wisdom, ancient wisdom is phenomenal and it's only now in this century that they're really starting to understand and catch up with it on a scientific level. Um, that's kind of, yeah, the basics. So some takeaways that I had there was the core principles based on everything that Audrey just said was number one, um, all of the cultures were practicing the same thing even though they weren't in, were not in direct communication. Mm. Number two, some reflections there was that um, they started at where where they were at, meaning they were in nature and so they would pick what they found in nature to use as oils. The point about that too is that based on where you lived, I, I believe that Mother Nature had always provided you with the exact plants and essential oils, smells and scents, type of water even, to weather system that you needed for that place that you were living in. Um, and the reason for that is because essential oils or even just the lavender plant expresses itself 
completely differently to in France, to what it would in Britain, to what it would in America, just based on the seasons and the dirt that it's growing in. And based on every everything that's being fed into that plant in that direct environment, the plant will express itself chemically different so that it could support everybody in that immediate mm. environment. So that's a really, yeah, that's really, cool really cool pull away from the understanding the core principles and the history here. So we're always given what we need in our immediate environment. Mm, that's really good. Okay. Cool. So let's talk about um, I would like to hear your breakdown of understanding the quality, yeah. uh, the components of maybe the vi- vibration of essential oils mm-hmm. and start at the basics for us. Yeah, like we talk a lot about this in our masterclass too that we're going to have on the 11th of November, um, going back to how important quality is and how it contributes to its how effective the oil works in your body. Uh, And it's really interesting because people tend to think, well, you know, they all smell the same, so why don't I just spend less money and buy it from that shop instead of the best quality? You know, it smells the same. It should do the same, but it's so different and – And the difference could be just a few trace components in the oil. But knowing that every single part or every single component is plays a critical role is really is um, important here because they all work together in synergy. One, it's like one unlocks the door for another compound to go in and support the cell, for example. And if you're missing that one trace component, that key, you can't open the door. So the oil cannot do what it's supposed to do. So any sort of lack of integrity when it comes down to whether it be the farming practice or the harvesting process or even the temperature or how how quickly you distill an oil is going to impact the quality of your oil and what it's going to do in your body for you. And a lot of people don't understand how important that is. They just rather save a few bucks. I always found it interesting that Young Living or Gary in particular and the group of scientists that he was working with um, had recorded hundreds of times the expression or the chemis- the chemical expression of a certain plant based on the season in which they would plant the seed and how if you pick it on month 26 versus month 36 or whatever it be, that it was completely different. Right. And the importance of letting even, say, for example, the Palo Santo tree before you even distill its essential oil or use it at all, you have to allow for that 100-year-old tree to naturally fall and still wait for a year or two before you even distill it because the chemistry is at totally its peak. And yeah. I don't think any other companies have been investing into the research and understanding this, you know? Yeah, it's absolutely not. Um, that's what's so mind-blowing and incredible about Young Living and their processes and the science team and the decades that Gary spent in researching every different botanical, every different species that is distilled, there is a ideal way. And even it comes down to, for example, ylang ylang or think something like jasmine, the very delicate flowers, you have to be mindful, not just what day of the month to pick it, but what time of the day to pick it can make a huge difference. And so they've spent so much time and passion into discovering very unique processes for every single botanical to get that oil into that bottle that's in your hand right now. Audrey, tell us about the importance of understanding the vibrational uh, components of essential oils. Yeah. Uh, Like I mentioned earlier, vibration, everything vibrates, but you can have a you know, vibration that is supportive to your body or not supportive to your body. So when you have a high quality oil that has retained all of its signature from Mother Nature and you haven't um, compromised it in any way through those processes I mentioned, neither have you added anything synthetic to it, right? Then you're going to have a high quality um, live oil. It's alive. It's a living thing. It carries vibration. And so using something, uh, and every oil will have a different vibration as mother nature would intend. And some of them will speak more directly to certain organs in your body, or maybe your bones, maybe your spine, maybe your brain. Uh, It's like a resonance that has this uh, harmonizing effect on certain areas of your body. So there's different oils. And that's, you know, that's a whole other topic. But it's also been discovered that 
they can even measure with consistency that your body has a certain electrical impulse or electrical response to particular essential oils. It's actually communicating. It's creating vital energy in your body. So that's phenomenal to understand. So it's important to understand the vibrational quality of essential oils in order to understand how to use it and implement it into your lifestyle. For example, if you are working on uh, something to do with brain health, attention span, focus, then using essential oils that hold the signature of attention focus uh, or perhaps that stimulate the limbic brain in order for you to pay attention, wake up, nervous system, hello, it's a call to action, then those essential oils and the signature of Mother Nature will play an important part in being able to support you when you work in a day-to-day role at, yeah. at your workplace. Yeah. If there is a signature of uh, relax, uh, rest, perhaps recover the muscles, hey, keep the muscles warm, keep the blood flowing, give more oxygen to these areas. If that's what you're wanting to communicate to a particular area, for me, it's my lower back and my I just did leg day, so I want to communicate to give more blood flow and uh, oxygen to my legs, then I would use a very specific essential oil that carries that signature. So to link why it's so important to understand the vibrational qualities of essential oils is really just to understand you. And when you understand you, health is going to be a whole new ball game. Now, I'm going to transfer over to the difference between adulterated versus authentic, synthetic versus authentic uh, essential oils. Yeah. And I want to unpack, maybe first off, focus on adulterated or synthetic essential oils. What's happening? Where did that start? And maybe break down some of the yeah. the base level definitions of what it means. Mm. Have you ever realised or noticed that every shop out there has something made with lavender in it? <laughs> Have you ever thought, how on earth is there that much lavender in the world that every single product has lavender in it? It's absolutely impossible. It takes so much plant material to create an authentic essential oil. And so what we discovered is that you only need two or three compounds found in natural lavender to create the aroma of lavender. So a lot of things out there smell like lavender, but they don't have all the compounds that is found in the natural lavender plant. And so this is what we mean by synthetically created, so that it smells like the real thing, but you're missing so much more. And when it's synthetically created or man-made, you can never create, you can never take a man-made compound and have it perfectly fit into the receptors of your cells. They will not perfectly communicate with your cells. And that's a problem. If you, your body cannot process that compound, it's going to do something with that compound. It's not going to be metabolized. It's going to store it somewhere and it's going to create a problem in the long run. So that's uh, talking about synthetically created compounds and adulterated could be, oh, but I buy essential oils from the health food shop. It says pure on there and it says, you know, organic, but there's also, um, it can be cut and with something like with another compound, it could be stretched to make it last, um, create a larger yield. So it can be, you know, other compounds can be added to it to make it smell more pleasant to your nose so that it's more enticing to buy. It's not as earthy and rich. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I meant by when the when smell can deceive us and when the industry has really taken advantage of our, our sense of smell and our emotions and our connection to Mother Nature and created something that's totally not authentic at all. Most of the time when I smell things in nature, it's a mixture of pungent, dirty, yeah. kind of earthy, sometimes sweet. But I often find the pleasant smells like the most unique flower in the world is hidden at the top of a forest and I have to climb a tree. So 
there's also like a recognition that some precious things in nature, Mother Nature, you have to earn most of the time. And yeah. that's not necessarily true when we can go down to the store and visit uh, the middle shelf to top shelf of the aisle and get any essential oil. And um, the point here is that the full profile matters. The full signature matters. The full components and constituents mm. of each essential oil, each plant contributes to not just a complex, robust chemistry, but also a powerful, potent, and at the same time, gentle. Yeah, exactly. Subtle. And what I learned um, well, that was really interesting is most of you will know how the Young Living Lavender Oil smells, Lavandula angustifolia. It's so rich. It's so robust. And it's one of the most complex oils out there. It has over 70 different constituents in there. And what I mentioned earlier, to get just the scent of, a, of lavender, it only takes two or three compounds. So what happened to the other 67 compounds, right? What do they do? They actually play a role mm -hmm. in our body. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, now, if we transition across to authentic oils, Audrey, um, what does authentic mean to you? Yeah, what does it mean to me? It means something that was, that has all its therapeutic properties, right, in, from the plant. It hasn't been manipulated in any way, shape or form. It hasn't been, um, yeah, manipulated is the right word. It hasn't been cut with other things that have to, to make deceive you into thinking that it's the real thing. Essentially so, untouched. Untainted. Un untainted, untainted and untouched. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So on the level on a level of zero authenticity, it's basically all synthetic and a hundred percent authentic yeah. essential oil would almost be going to pick the lavender plant yourself yeah. and just rubbing it in your hands. If that's right. gonna be like we're talking about a hundred percent authentic, that's a hundred percent. But obviously, um, what's been amazing about young living is it's not only that they're backed by the science uh, by it, but they have all of the intermediary quality checks to enable that we can move plants from each farm all the way into your living room, into the pocket, into each drop in your palm, um, allowing you to use the highest therapeutic benefits mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's important because... Uh, there's been some recalls over the years where it just it, if 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 the if the grade of young living essential oils is at like let's call it ninety five percent if a hundred percent is like grab the plant and mix yeah. it in your hand then ninety five percent is where most essential oils for young living is let's call it ninety seven but it, it it blows my mind that if ninety seven percent is the quality or the level that they hold and then if it only hits ninety five percent that that whole distillation of those plants are unable to go to market. That's phenomenal. Yeah, they, they don't let anything through unless it really meets a lot of their um, stringent guidelines and, and requirements of the oil. Uh, Gary was very passionate about that. And um, sadly, it's not to say there aren't other good oils out there. There are pure organic oils out there that are untainted but they don't have the science and research to back. They don't have the invested uh, equipment that costs millions of dollars to make sure things are done properly. So they might be missing 10, 15, 20, 30 compounds, but the, nature had those in there for a reason. So if you're missing even five of those compounds, then you don't have a robust oil that's supposed to do what it's supposed to do because you're, then you're missing synergy. You're missing this teamwork that all these compounds in there are supposed to do. To work together you know? that's great in a moment's time we're going to go on a short break for about two minutes and then we'll come back to the live stream back to the podcast um, but in the meanwhile it's a perfect opportunity to talk about uh, our amazing free uh, book our, our workbook that we've provided to the public it's on our website and it's called the aroma breath workbook it's one of a kind, and that's why I, I titled it The Ultimate Aroma Breath Workbook because it enables you to really go through the fundamentals of relax, release, 
uh, restore and rejuvenate in a way where we've organized and suggested each essential oil for each section and I've brought in breath work for each section pre-recorded. You get the opportunity to go through questions and answer them almost as diary entries to understand what's moving through your body, both emotionally or physically, or how it supported you. Um, and you can press play on the aromatherapy video to get coaching or training from Audrey so she can break down the basics of each oil. And you get a recording of the breath work from me that you can use while uh, breathing in essential oils. For example, let's isolate and take relax for a moment. If you're the type of person that wakes up stressed, goes to sleep stressed, feeling a little bit out of energy, and you need the support to really support your nervous system, to allow it to rest and digest, to put it down when it needs to be down so that you can recover for the following day. If you're looking for uh, essential oils and breathwork recordings that can support you to relax the anxiety and really relieve your system, then in this workbook, we go over essential oils such as lavender, but also we've got vetiver. We've got a few other key essential oils. We break down the elements. We break down the history and the story of these essential oils, all housed on one page, including a breathwork that goes for it's somewhere around 20 to 30 minutes uh, that can support and relax your system. That's there available if you visit our website. I might share my screen for a moment just so you can see uh, what it looks like if I share it this way here. We go this way. There we go. There it is. Uh, you just scroll down on the main page and it has all of the pages there available. Click on the download button and it's there for free for you as a checklist. It has different notes sections and it has the whole list of essential oils, including a lookbook that we put together for you. So that's there available. Anything else that you want to add on to that, Audrey? Oh, no, you're good. <laughs> okay, great. So we're going to go on break and we'll see you guys in about two minutes. Speak to you soon. This is what you're waiting for. I think we're ready to rock. Bring it back, do it clean, clean, clean. Smoke a sack, get the max, sip the lean, lean, lean. Fuck a chill, fuck a bell, make a scene, scene, scene. Fit the crack, sun the bands up my jeans, jeans, jeans. All right, and we're back. That was really quick in terms of music. So let me tuck in my chair. Welcome back to the Ascension Academy podcast. Again, I'm your host, Tumai, and we're joined here by... Audrey. And we're live inside of our members group. Uh, they are members of the Young Living and the Ascension Academy. Uh, they get first preference as to watching our video. And throughout this, I'll be able to check if there are any questions or any comments or concerns. Today we're going over the bare basics of essential oils. It's really a guide to the foundations of 
both oils, Mother Nature, and applied aromatherapy. We haven't got to the applied section just yet, so we're going to get to that right after the break that we just had. So we can transition into that a little bit. We just recently spoke about adulterated versus authentic essential oils, and now I want to talk about the distillation process itself. So I'll have Audrey take us away with maybe the basics of the distillation process. How did it sort of make its way through society? How was the information passed on? And mm. how was it perfected in many ways? Go for it. Yeah, it's it's uh, a lot of the masters of distillation uh, are in Europe. And uh, it was very much a closed sort of uh, knowledge, not a lot, not well known, uh, very specialised. And I know it did become very mainstream after a while but the problem with uh going mainstream is a lot of the standards and the quality checks weren't in place so i think in more recent times uh especially with young living having pioneered the whole um making popularizing aromatherapy in today's world uh there's been a lot of people that have jumped on the bandwagon and we're not sure what the <laughs> distillation methods are like. But what I do know within the Young Living community and, and that company, uh, Gary did study under the Masters of Distillation in Europe and brought back that knowledge. And, and through his own studies and uh, passion, he created more uh, cutting-edge technology, uh, so much so that he's patented equipment, especially for high-quality distillation and a high-quality output. So it's, it comes down to a lot to do with how much pressure is placed on the plant, uh, the temperature, uh, and the time it takes to distill certain botanicals. It comes down to a science to, in order to get the peak constituents from that plant. Yeah. Great, Audrey. So let's go over that again. My question is going to be the distillation process. And perhaps I'll ask it in a different way. How has it evolved over the years and what have you found about or researched with the distillation process itself? Go for it. Mm -hmm. So the distillation process has really come from very closed uh, community of people that have kept it tight and it has slowly trickled out to the marketplace, especially through Young Living and their processes um, and understanding and creating and evolving the techniques uh, with R&D and getting the peak constituents from each botanical by carefully documenting how long it takes to distill a certain botanical, uh, how much pressure should be applied to it, uh, what's the temperature. So every botanical will, will require different, different distillation uh, techniques, time, pressure, temperature and all that. Great, mm -hmm. great. And so let's transfer over to now that the uh, the essential oil or the plant has been distilled. Um, it gets moved into a bottle. What are some of the applied processes or the tips that you give people um, in terms of, yeah, real-life real, real life application or what do they teach in the aromatherapy world that you could mm -hmm. pass on as golden nuggets? Yeah. So in the aromatherapy world, when I started learning about aromatherapy and applied essential, uh, aromatherapy and essential oils is – it, you have to use respect the oil, right? You have to use uh, the right blend of oils. You have to understand uh, what it is you're trying to address in the human body. Uh, there were so many rules when it came to that. And it's about just a little goes a long way and using the right um, natural carrier oils together with those essential oils, you can really support the entire body through massage therapy through, again, the sense of smell and its direct access to your emotional brain. That's really at the fundamental level. But since then, I've discovered so many other ways to use essential oils in my day-to-day -day life. A lot of people will tell you, and the industry will tell you, you don't need to use essential oils every day. I'm like, no way, I'm using it every day because it really supports every process. It, it penetrates every cell in my body. It gets, it's just all the goodness that I want to have uh, in order to just maintain a healthy balance and level, you know, so that nothing gets it, – it keeps you in check. It keeps your body in check. Yeah. So, so a few things that I want to add on with this particular point here when it comes to the applied um, or the application of aromatherapy or essential oils is I've found that 
there are a lot of um, people in my social circle that number one wouldn't use it on a regular basis or number two have perhaps a limiting belief around uh, when to use it and how often um, it should be used and it's it's been very telling for me and uh, the relationship that I've had regularly with it is because just as a as a human being your primary objective here in life is would be somewhere around the vicinity of being curious about all things trying it on seeing how it fits for you often what i find is people have negative um, perceptions um, negative commentary or beliefs on any modality ask them what the weather will be tomorrow and it's going to be dark and cloudy as an example right and so what i found over my relationship or journey with essential oils is that um, initially before i started to use it I was always stuck in my head um, a lot of the time in trying to work things out. And what that, do- what that had done to me is most of life's problems had mostly been um, in my head. And my ability to bridge both my thinking and synchronize it with my feeling was a simple act of breathing and using essential oils to support me to feel again. And it raised my vibration to a certain level where I could rethink again in a whole new perspective. And the reason why I bring this up is because a lot of the time we're walking around at a negative charge and we don't even realize it. Give uh, somebody half a glass and they would see that as, hey, hang hang on, I've been shortchanged here. Give me the remaining half. And and the mindset here is, and the lens has always been to see things at the negative perspective. And what I found was I was actually walking around with a lot of that and not even realizing it. So, of course, initially, as as soon as Audrey started to suggest that I should use frankincense in this situation, that to my peppermint would be ideal here on your desk, that when you go to the gym, use these essential oils to stimulate your lower back to support you in your lifts. Of course, my mindset's going to receive that in a very specific way. And naturally, the only option that I have in my lifestyle would be to say that essential oils don't need to be used on a day-to-day basis. My invitation to a lot of people, and this is my own personal story, my invitation will always be for people to try things on, to realize that perhaps there's something in a blind spot of theirs that's outside of their awareness, that if we could use something so base level as Mother Nature's essential oils, scents and smells, applied with a diffuser or perhaps directly topically onto a muscle or onto uh, an area of your body that needs support or even for me just different times of the day I challenge you to do that on a regular basis I invite you to see how that changes you when we talk about the vibrational qualities of essential oils and its entrainment with your human body what resonance it brings you can begin to understand how my mindset started to change and shift, which changed my lens and my perspective, that changed my belief system and my overall outcome and relationship with essential oils. And guess what? As a bonus, I got to continue to become curious about life and all of the different modalities that were on the table as an option for me to always try out. I had more options because I had more perspective, because I could feel more and I could think more and I could be more. So that's really what I wanted to cover here when it came to the point that Audrey um, brought up before. What are your thoughts on that, Audrey? Yeah, here's some of my insight and perspective, and it's very much related to what you said, is that we're so bombarded with negative information, like the news. Um, and whenever there's bad news, it's it goes viral. Everyone hears about it, not just once, but multiple times. And the thing with that is it's, it's like walking into a room full of people and you, our emotions are very volatile. 
it is so volatile. It just goes up and down and up and down. And for women, it's even worse, right? Because we have that time of the month. No, really? <laughs> Are you sure? Yes, I'm positive. Yeah. And it depends on the moon and it depends on other women around them. So you can understand our emotions are fluctuating all the time, depending on what we hear, what we see, what thoughts we have, who we are around. And so it's really important to understand that at the fundamental level, these essential oils or Mother Nature itself have a very constant, very uh, reliable, consistent vibration, right? They keep us in check. So having them in and on your body or around you on a day-to-day -day basis can really harmonize your emotions. And that's why it's important when it comes to you know, harmonizing and balancing your emotions, you're able to think clearly, you're able to come up with different ways of doing things, different perspectives, different solutions. Like if you have brain fog and you just can't be, I nearly used to swear, can't be bothered with today because your kid came home and chucked his rubbish on your table, figuratively speaking, and then someone else comes home and chucks their crap on the table. It's really hard to have to keep your vibration high, to keep your clarity of your mind open. And so that's why I always go back to essential oils and aromatherapy and um, trust. It's really just going back to nature is what you're doing yeah. uh, and it's base level smells and scents. Yeah. Um, and often I found, like, just a bit of a reflection for me is I would turn around to Audrey and say, no, don't change me. Don't change my emotions. That. They are my feelings and my feelings alone. But Let I'm me work with them. them all, you said. <laughs> yeah, and while that, that is also true, like, um, no need to change anything or numb anything at all. Um, the the detail here or the distinguishing part here is is that – we need to identify what out, what's your ideal outcome, what's the desired outcome. Exactly. If you want to continue a cycle of feeling down, depressed, out, uh, maybe out, stressed out, um, anxious, uh, confused or brain fog a little bit there or, or any of these feelings that could come up in the body, if that's something that you want to continue, then that's for you to continue. Whenever mm -hmm. the time's right, Mother Nature will always be there available for you, yep. right? Yeah, and to that point, really interesting you said that um, – it really determines your ultimate outcome in your life. It's like that 1%, 2% pivot. You're using a few drops of oils every single day to support your emotions and your health and your mental well-being. That 1% or 2% shift every day, you end up in an entirely different destination, right? Yeah. Super cool. So there's two things that I want to do for the listeners. Obviously, this is going on podcast. Uh, uh, as a podcast on Spotify, this will be on Apple as well, um, Apple Podcasts, it'll be on YouTube and it'll be also in our community group in the Ascension Academy of the Members Only. There's two things that were spoken about just then. Uh, we spoke about actually husbandry, which is our last topic to talk about. Husbandry, the relationship of mankind, um, humans with nature and how we are almost tasked to take care of Mother Nature and have uh, an open relationship with with her, uh, number one. But number two, I feel like it's just only natural on episode number one to give more of the applied aromatherapy technique. And I would like to talk into a little more detail about one process called um, AFT, mm -hmm. the Aroma Freedom Technique. Now, Audrey's certified in this particular technique. So if we can break down for the listeners um, what that is and also just let them know that we have this as a recording inside of the Academy, feel free to create a free login. It's available there for you to go through the process. You will need three oils that Audrey will take you through in a moment's time. So go ahead there. Yeah, so what is Aroma Freedom Technique? It's a technique that uses some uh, psychology principles developed by a clinical psychologist with over 25 years of experience and the therapeutic benefits of Young Living's um, essential oils, namely frankincense. It is a single species. Uh, don't look for ones that are mixed and blended with many species of frankincense. It is lavandula and gustifolia, and it is a blend that has uh, called Stress Away, which has very, very rich content of vanillin in there. Mm -hmm. Now, um, 
the process for me has changed my life. Often when we speak on stage, we have it um, pre-blended for all of our audience to go through a process. Um, tell us more about the process itself and how, um, how it can be applied for people. Um, because we've just recently spoken about emotions before I was mm -hmm. stuck. And so at times I was like, don't, I don't want to change at all. Um, why is this process important? And uh, yeah, talk yeah, to the people, process, take it down a little bit forever. Sure. The process really involves taking the oils, blending them together to create the memory release blend, we call that. And then we step you through this process where you are able to identify identify feelings and beliefs and emotions that hold you back in certain areas of your life and then using those that the aroma of that blend to help to release that emotion that you're feeling at that time and to really after releasing that create a new intention belief or affirmation that you can anchor in with those aromas so it allows you to identify point a where you are right now and identify point b where you want to be, a desired outcome, and bridge the gap from point A to point B and really understand in your body what it took for you to go from point A to point B. It's not so much focused on somebody else helping you. You actually take yourself through the process. It's just guided by either Audrey in a recording or her live at an event or her one-on-one -on -one with you if that's required. And the other key point here is that when we're able to be with the emotion and allow it to exist and acknowledge it and identify it, that also means that we're identifying the subconscious belief system behind it and also acknowledging that our body just is there, that that feeling is there and that we need to allow it to be there because often we're so busy in life that we're just numb to the fact that the feeling is there, allowing mm. a cycle to continue. So this um, AFT process, Aroma Freedom Technique, um, has been something that's been studied both um, with the chemistry but also with the applied technique from a psychologist. And uh, I feel like we were able to break down the chemistry of it we could go into that a little bit more detail but we won't today um the the key point that i wanted to make here is that it's a natural process that everyone goes through anyway it's just the essential oils support the limbic brain to process it a little faster or in a structured manner mm. yeah. yeah perfect cool so last question here or last uh, part that i want to break down would be about husbandry here I'm, I'm just going to let you talk about husbandry and what you think it means. Well, you know, when you talked about that, uh, it reminded me of my visit to the Young Living Farm in Hawaii. And they have a, it's actually more of a sustainability um, farm where they believe in the philosophy of uh, when you look after the land, the land will look after you. It's about sustainability. It's about long-term um, nurturing of the land. And that that philosophy holds true uh, in that culture over there in, in Hawaii, but it should it holds true for cultures and civilizations all over the world. Uh, when we really look after the land, the, the 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 biodynamic farming practices plays an important role in order to make things sustainable long term and be able to provide for us for many many years to come. Yeah, that's pretty much it. From do you want to add anything to that? <laughs> no, that's it. All right. So that's it for episode number one of the Ascension Academy podcast. Season one, we're focusing on essential oils. In the next episode, we're going to continue uh, focusing on essential oils. And then season two will be focused on breathwork. So awesome. uh, thank you so much for joining everybody. And until next, next time, time. We'll, we'll speak to you soon. See you later. I'm not going to